welcome back to my ongoing coverage of Boy's Planet, where dreams are crushed and dreamers are ignored. Based on what I've just seen, I think my ranking system may be one of the worst predictors in the game, but we'll get back to that in good time. For now, let's start off with the recap and we'll kind of interweave some opinions along the way. The latest episode of Boy's Planet, the 10th episode titled My Heart is Nonstop, is pretty much just the second half of the third mission with a product placement sideshow at the beginning of the episode. And it was all pretty uncomplicated, so I don't want to drag this out, but the episode starts with the boys practicing to the point of fatigue, and then coping with the challenge through camaraderie and snacking. Uh, when we get back to performance day, the masters are reminiscing about how far the boys had come. Uh, they improved a lot, uh, especially referencing uh, Supercharger. Uh, you could see how the masters sort of wanted to root for them as the underdog, based on how good they performed. So after this, there's a secret mission segment. Uh, it involves theater and musical performance. Star Master Joe Kwan of 2AM is revealed alongside uh, two stage actors, uh, Jung Dong Hua and Nam Hu Wu Ju. Uh, the boys were tasked with memorizing and performing a short scene in Paris in exchange for uh, star rankings, uh, potential perks if they ranked the highest. Uh, all stars, they basically received a solo promotion video and cosmetics, and then the overall winner got their face plastered in held in beauty stores all across Korea. Now this was a funny challenge. I've watched musicals since the age of seven, so it's always fun for me to see live theater and improv. And you know, personally, I loved Takuto's uh, attempt. His voice cracked me up. And then you had Ji Woo and Jun Hyun. They made me laugh too. I feel like this challenge was kind of a test of humility. And I think that because, you know, the role of the fox, it feels like it's surface level embarrassing, but really, it requires you to take it seriously to the point where you overcome your own struggles with playing the roles and that effectively causes the audience to take you seriously as well. So even though someone like Sung had been, he was wafting his rear end as if he farted, uh, but then he played it completely straight and he got praise. Now similarly, Leo Tech, he basically had no separation from his role and for that he won the top prize. Like he was the fox. And after that, it was back to prep and performance packages. So the next team up was Switch. Watching them step on stage, I thought they had decent outfits, and I made a brief observation to myself about their introduction, and maybe boy bands in K-pop in general. And I feel like they were being a bit on the kitty side, and maybe that's something that's kind of more common in K-pop, but uh, it's not really something I'm familiar with as a Westerner. Now the Masters, they commented uh, that the role distribution here was really good, but in preps, Jong Woo and Tae Rae, they missed their parts and they choked. And there was low confidence all around. And if it wasn't for Park Han Bin, the team would probably have put on an even worse performance. Now, in the actual performance, they had a nice setup. And it was a fun start, actually. With a score of 7.5 to start, that's pretty good. And it climbed up to 7.9. My overall like the impression I got was that the performance, it was perfectly competent, actually. Uh, but to me, it wasn't very surprising. Uh, not until the very end. And the very end, it started to pick up, but it was way too late. And, you know, even though it was a good song, I just feel like they needed to create more uh, burst-style opportunities, like something Kam Jun Hyun would do. Now, Park had been, he would win first place with 741 points, while Zhang Shuaibo got sixth with 402. And the thing is, I don't know if Zhang Shuaibo actually did bad this time around, um, and, but maybe he's being punished for drama from the past that they didn't redeem him on. In Team Say My Name, the drama continued with Tragic Matt still being sad and troubled over being assigned to a different vocal role. And I feel like because Sung Han Bin didn't say anything the first time, it was basically On Ji Wung who suggested the role change. Uh, the guilt was on him and he kind of felt, he felt guilty for making Matt feel sad. Now, in the interim check with Master Choi, the lack of chemistry was very apparent to him, and he had expected them to do much better, but the vibes all around were bad. Uh, Matthew, he kind of had this Dr. Park face on the whole time, and that was really bugging Master Choi, and to be honest, it kind of bugs me too. <laughs> and it's like I said 
in the weeks before leading up to this, I just said, and I said this before Matt even had any problems. Hey, as long as Matt just smiles through his performances, he'll excel, he'll do well, people will vote for him. But he's been such a bummer lately, and I feel like it's going to negatively impact him if he doesn't flip it around. So after this, Ji Wung, he approaches Matthew and formally apologizes, which causes Matthew to reciprocate and apologize in return, allowing both of them to have redemption through understanding and forgiveness. Now, it's semi-tragic here that Ji Wung who is basically this subtle force for good and problem solving, is so often taken for granted. He basically never complains, even if he loses his standing in terms of the ranks, and yet he is always helping his competition. And, you know, I accused him of being a producer pet in a way, but I feel like he's just genuinely helping people out now. I feel like I've, I've, I've gotten over that, and I just see him, like, volunteering to apologize to people and stuff. I mean, that's like... That's just a really mature thing to do. And I feel like people at home, they take that for granted. And even Matthew maybe takes that for granted because Ji Wung has helped Matthew in the past. And, you know, for that, I don't feel like Ji Wung got any credit or benefit of the doubt from Matthew that Ji Wung was always looking out for him and for his best interest. Everything seems to work out by the next rehearsal, at least. And so now we have a happy Matthew again, and he's collecting compliments from the masters, and everything seems to be sorted out. In the actual performance, the intro was cute, and the performance started at a 7.9. Han Bin, he had a strong opening, and I feel like the whole performance for these guys was consistently upbeat, and the score eventually rose to an 8.3, which isn't much, actually. Uh, and it kind of remained there. Now, throughout the performance, I'm wondering if Sung Han Bin was the real center, because... The camera seemed to always focus on him, and I noticed him more than I did uh, Han Yujin. And I also felt like there was a stagnation overall in the performance, and it didn't really, similar to what happened with Switch, this performance didn't really surprise me either. Uh, finally, while I liked Ji Woo, I did feel like he seemed out of place. It's like if Mads Mikkelsen, if he showed up and introduced himself like as a skateboarder or something. It's just an aesthetic thing. I feel like it can't really be helped, but maybe these boys could have, or the people who in char were in charge of the stage, they could have aged the story world by about three years, <laughs> so it was college time, and you know they would have fit in better, I feel like. Now, the last team to perform was Team Over Me, and when they came out, I felt like their outfits were lacking. They were literally all dressed like, uh, I don't know, Michael Bolton? Uh, except without the jacket. Uh, also, the only guy whose cut seemed right here was Ricky. And Jay, he had the worst tailoring job, and, it, and his makeup didn't work either. And they kept doing close-ups on his face. And I felt like they could have like maybe bronzed him or tanned him instead. And it feels like sabotage. I mean, interim checks, the team, they didn't do so hot. There were voice cracks and no cohesion. Master Solji was not happy, and she could sense that this team lacked hunger. Now, mostly... I feel like the team, they ignored the vocal aspect, and then that was confirmed in the show, and it's probably because they couldn't finalize the choreo. And it turns out saying how he was overly concerned with allowing everybody to have uh, input, but he didn't know how to deal with conflicting ideas. In this way, Zhang Hao, he still tried to keep his promise to highlight everyone, but you know, when you're a people pleaser, especially in a leadership role, uh, you still need to make final decisions uh, that will inevitably disappoint someone or you got to take some kind of risk and bring something new and uncharted that's going to benefit everybody now by the next interim check they were still making mistakes and the star master was harsh with them when zhang hao consulted master soldier in private she tells him to be less emotional and do what it takes after which he decides to independently formulate a new formation for the whole team and that helps everyone to shine as he originally promised now after this they head into the recording studio where ricky is also praised again in contrast to earlier when there were voice cracks. But uh, by now I was feeling, hey, this prep sequence it kind of feels long. Like they're they're giving special attention to this team. That must mean something. Now in the actual performance, it started at a 7.2, and for being good on a consistent uh, technical level, it rose to an 8.1, which is a very high number to raise by. But honestly, personally, I wasn't actually happy with the performance. Like I really didn't feel anything as I watched it. And while I was watching all these people's heads and reactions being positive, I really couldn't relate. Like, everyone kept going, whoa, you know? And 
I just didn't feel it. But to me, it was a fourth place performance. But technically, it was actually very good. Now at the end, Zhang Hao got first place with 852 points, which is the highest score. And then Jay got the lowest with 485. And I blame that on the tailor and maybe the makeup artist. Since the performance he put on was actually good. Like, I, rec I recognized him doing good notes. And actually, if he was able to do that and have his look uh, to put together, it probably could have given me those burst moments that would have made me excited about this performance, but uh, it's too late. So after that, we get the results, and once again, the live audience, they never fail to surprise me and disappoint me. Over me, they got first place, and while I predicted this team would get third, I personally ranked their performance a fourth place one. And I'm guessing they won for hormonal reasons, which I can't relate to. Say My Name got second place, but to me they were a third, and I previously predicted they would get the highest votes based on voting power, but I guess it just wasn't surprising enough, and maybe the audience felt the same way that I did, which is kind of like, hey, this is good, but like, it, is it anything that I could see somewhere else that's better? I don't know. Unguard, they got third, but I felt like they should have got the second place in the performance. My original prediction was that they'd have the best performance, but still be voted second by the audience regardless. Now Switch, they got last place, which is probably the only thing he had in line with predictions, but I think if they had more time, they could have had more surprising moments, but they just kind of ran short, and by the time they wanted to uh, work in their choreo and make things better, uh, it was too late. Now finally, Supercharger, they got fourth place, and while I thought that they would get pretty much the lowest vo votes, uh, the actual performance, I feel like it deserved much better. I think it, along with On Guard, should have been fighting for the top two slots. And so, every prediction I made was basically wrong. But keep in mind that things like voting power, it's based on elimination data, and not the audience voting. So things could still fall into place by the, by the elimination next week. And finally, uh, while this is not a part of the episode, we did get a survival announcement episode this the next day, which showed extended walkouts for elimination. And it also spoiled the 11th place safe trainee which to me i kind of expected uh but i won't spoil it here in case you wanted it revealed next week but that's pretty much it if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you don't like it give it a thumbs down let me know why in the comment box down below finally if you're not subscribed consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next